Hello everyone, good morning. Today we're going to discuss chapter 11, students with speech and language disorder. So this is your teacher, Mrs. Amy M. Talawe. And today we're going to define the terms communication, speech and language, and explain how they relate to each other. We will also enumerate and define processes that involve in speech production, enumerate and define the elements of language, enumerate and describe the milestone in language development. We will also enumerate and describe voice disorders, articulation disorders, and fluency disorders, give examples of the components of language, define types of language disorders, identify and describe the criteria for communication disorder, name and describe the causes of communication disorder, and lastly, describe the assessment procedures in determining the presence of speech and language disorder. Okay, so let's first define what communication is. Communication is the exchange of information, ideas, needs and desires between two or more persons. It is an interactive process where there is the intention to send a message, a sender who encodes and express the message, a receiver who decodes and responds to the message, a shared means of communication. A speech. A speech is the actual behavior of producing a language code by making appropriate vocal sounds pattern. It is the neuromuscular act of producing sounds that are used in language, while the eyelids, the specific organs for vision and the ear for audition, there is not one specific organ for speech. Instead, the part of the speech organs are borrowed <clears throat> from from the respiratory system and the digestive system. Okay, that's the normal speech organs. A speech actually is the most effective and efficient method of expressing language. It is also the most complex and difficult human activity. The other ways of expressing language are gestures, manual signing, pictures, and written symbols. There are four separate but related processes in the production of the speech sounds, namely respiration, phonation, resonation, and articulation. Respiration, that's the breathing provides the air of or power supply for speech sounds to be audible. Phonation, that is the production of sounds as the vocal bands or folds of the larynx are drawn together by the contraction of a specific muscle, causing the air to oxalate. Resonation refers to the sound quality of the oxalating air that is shaped as it passes through the throat or pharyngeal, oral or mouth, and nasal cavities. Articulation is the formation of a specific recognizable speech sounds by the tongue, lips, teeth, and mouth. Now let's define what language. Language is a code whereby ideas about the world are expressed through a conventional system of arbitrary signals for communication. Language has five dimensions, namely phonology. This refers to the linguistic rules governing a language sound system. Phonemes are represented by letters or other symbols between slashes. Example, the phoneme N represents the end sound in sing. The second one, we have the morphology. This refers to the way basic units of meaning are combined into words. A morphine is the smallest element of a language that carries meaning. For example, the word basket and ball have one for morphine, and the word basketball has two morphemes. The third one is syntax. This is a system of rules governing the meaningful arrangement of words into sentences. The rules specify relations among the subject, verb, and object. The fourth one is semantics. It's a system of rules that relate phonology and syntax to meaning. 
Semantics describe how people use language to convey meaning. The language model refers to semantic as the content of the language that allows its expression and understanding. And the last one, we have pragmatics. This is a set of rules governing how language is used. And there are three kinds of pragmatic skills. So first, we have using language to achieve various communication functions and goals. Second, using information from the conventional conversational context. For example, modifying one's message according to listener reaction and knowing how to use conversational skill effectively, for example, starting and ending a conversation, current taking. Now, on topic number two, we will talk on the milestone in language development. We will start with the birth to six months. So from birth to six months, the first form of communication is crying. Babies make sounds of comfort, such as coos and gargles. Bubbling soon follows as a form of communication. Vowel sounds are produced. No meaning is attached to the words heard from others. From 6 to 12 months, the baby's voice begins to rise and fall while making sounds. Child begins to understand certain words and child may respond appropriately to the word no. They may perform an action when asked and may repeat words said by others. From 12 to 18 months, the child has learned to say several words with appropriate meaning. They are able to tell what they want by pointing and their response to stimuli to simple comments. 18 to 24 months, there is a great spark in the acquisition and use of speech at this age. The child begins to combine words and begins to form words into short sentences. From two to three years at this stage, the child talks. The child asks questions and they have a vocabulary of about 900 words. They participate in conversation, can identify colors, can use plurals, tell simple stories, and begin to use consonant sounds. From ages three to four, child begins to speak rapidly. They begin to ask questions to obtain information, and sentences are longer and more varied. Child can complete simple analogies. Ages four to five years, child has an average vocabulary of over 1,500 words, and child sentences average five words in length. Child is able to define words, able to modify speech, and can use conjunctions. They can also recite poems and sing songs from memory. There are types of speech and language disorders. These are disorders in speech, language, and those that result from hearing disorders. The disorders in speech are voice or phonation and resonance disorders. The language disorders come in the form of delayed language, aphasia, and related disorders. While the communicative disorders that result from damages to the hearing mechanisms are caused by conductive hearing loss, sensory neural hearing loss, auditory nerve and central auditory nervous system hearing loss, and functional hearing loss. Here are the following criteria that must be present to indicate the presence of a communication disorder. The transmission and or perception of message is faulty. The person is placed at an economic disadvantage. The person is placed at a learning disadvantage. The person is placed at a social disadvantage. And there is a negative impact on the person's emotional growth. The problem causes physical damage or endangers the health of the person. Speech disorders. A speech is abnormal when it deviates so far from the speech of other people that it calls attention to itself, interferes with communication, or causes the speaker or his listener to feel distress. A speech impairment 
as an intelligible abuses the speech mechanism are culturally or personally unsatisfactorily. Any deviation in the condition of the breathing and voice producing mechanisms, including the integrity of the mouth and oral cavity can cause speech disorder. There are related problems that cause ineffective communication, like problems in voice articulation and fluency. Voice disorders are deviations, intonations such as in pitch that's too high or too low, frequency, too loud or too soft, and quality, pleasant or irritating to the ears. Articulation disorders, these are errors in the formation of speech sounds. Any deviations from the process of correct articulation results to errors in pronouncing sounds and words. Errors of articulation. There are four basic errors of articulation. Number one, we have the omission. C for sin. Substitution. Whip for lip. Distortion. Talk for salt. Addition of extra sounds. Brown for brown. Now we have the, the degree of severity for the articulation disorders. We have the mild. The child may mispronounce certain words or certain sounds or use immature speech, but the speech can be understood. Usually disappears as child matures. Moderate, just like in mild cases, but if it persists for a long period of time, referral to a speech specialist should be made. The third one, we have severe. Many speech sounds is produced incorrectly that speech becomes unintelligible most of the time. The speech specialist complements the work of the special education teacher. There are related problems that cause ineffective communication like problems in voice, articulation, and fluency. The third of these is the fluency disorders interrupt the natural flow of speech with inappropriate pauses, hesitations, or repetitions. It is characterized by unnatural variations in speed, stress, and pauses. Examples of fluency disorders, we have fluttering. The speech is very fast with echo sounds and mispronounced sounds that make speech garbled and unintelligible. Stuttering. Rapid fire repetitions of consonants or vowel sounds, especially at the beginning of the words and complete verbal blocks. Language disorders. Abnormal acquisition, comprehension, or expression of spoken or written language. The disorder may involve one, some or all of the phonologic, morphologic, semantic, syntactic, or pragmatic components of the language of the linguistic system. Have problems in sentence processing and retrieving information from short and long-term memory. Children with language disorders manifest delays or lags in language development. They lack appropriate language comprehension or receptive and expressive abilities in the basic facets of communication, namely listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Language delays implies that a child is slow to develop linguistic skills but may acquire them in the same sequence as normal children. A language disorder is present when there is a disruption in the usual rate and sequence of the milestones in the language development. The following factors can contribute to language disorders in children. Cognitive limitations or mental retardation environmental deprivation, hearing impairments, emotional deprivation or behavioral disorders, structural abnormalities of the speech mechanism, problems connected with the form, content, and use of language may occur. Form problems. This covers phonology, morphology, and syntax problems that range from difficulty of decoding spoken language, abnormal use of prefixes to abnormal structure of words and wrong use of tenses, 
Next, we have the content problems. This includes semantic disorders manifested in poor vocabulary development, inappropriate use of words, and poor comprehension of the meaning of words, use or pragmatic problems, covers the inability to comprehend or use language in context, or conversation on various situations. Examples of language disorders, we have the central auditory processing disorder is a problem in processing sounds attributed to hearing loss or intellectual capacity. First, we have the aphasia. This is a language disorder that results from damage to the parts of the brain, result, brain responsible for language. Apraxia, also known as verbal apraxia or dyspraxia, in a condition where the child has trouble saying what he or she wants to say correctly and consistently. Next, dysarcha is the speech condition where the weakening of the muscles, mouth, face, and respiratory system affects the production of oral language. A speech and language disorders that result from hearing impairments. The most devastating effect of deafness and other forms of hearing impairment is on language development. Persons who are deaf or hard of hearing manifest speech and language disorders as a result of conductive, <clears throat> sensory neural, auditory, nerve central auditory nervous system, and functional hearing losses. Deafness restricts the perception of the sounds elements of a language and other sounds in the environment with or without hearing aid. While deaf persons can develop their communication skills manually through sign language and arbitrary gestures and movements or orally through speech reading and auditory training, these adaptations cannot approximate normal speech and language development. Next topic, we have the etiology of speech and language disorders. The causes of speech and language disorders are complex. There can be functional like environmental stress and can also be organic in the case of cleft palate. The causes can be congenital when the disorder is present at birth or they can be advantageous or acquired after birth, in infancy, in early childhood, and in the latter years. Etiological factors are traced to brain damage, secondary to mental retardation, hearing loss, ADHD, learning disabilities, autism, schizophrenia, cerebral palsy, cleft palate, vocal and cord injury, disorders of palate, gills de la Torre syndrome, injury, accidents, diseases, and trauma, and even meningitis. Now, the incidence and prevalence of language and speech disorder is a high incidence disorder. There is a strong relationship between communication disorders and learning disabilities, and the primary disability should be identified. In the United States, approximately 20% of children receiving special education services are with speech and language disorders, excluding cases that are secondary to these conditions. The estimate for speech and language disorders is agree agreed to be at least 5% of school-aged children. 3% of these has voice disorders and stuttering, 1%. The incidence of school children who manifest articulation is 2 to 3 percent, but this percentage decreases steadily with age. Next, learning and behavior characteristics. Children with speech and language disorders have problems in receptive and expressive language. They have difficulties in understanding what is meant by spoken communication as shown in the ability to follow. Directions, improper use of words, difficulty in expressing ideas in oral, signed or written forms, inappropriate grammatical patterns, and minimal vocabulary. Children with receptive language deficits 
have difficulty in communicating their ideas as shown in the inability to express or verbalize their thoughts. Response to questions, retain and retrieve, recall information and difficulties in activities that require abstraction. The areas of deficit and expressive language include difficulties in grammar, syntax, fluency, and vocabulary. Delays in the language development show when the child is behind his or her peers in the acquisition of speech and language skills. Speech and language disorders are secondary to disabilities such as the ADHD, learning disabilities, autism, schizophrenia, cerebral palsy, cleft palate, and other disorders of the palate, vocal cord injury, and the gillis tellitoris syndrome. A speech and language disorders negatively affect cognitive functioning. They have low academic performances as a result of concomitant difficulties in organizing ideas, following directions, recognizing phonemes, producing sounds, and finding the right words for things. Social interaction. They are reluctant to participate in school activities, inattentive, reluctant to interact with peers. Behavior. Perceive exclusion or rejection, the feeling of frustration, withdraw from social groups. Assessment procedures. The following steps are prescribed by the Special Education Division, the Bureau of Elementary Education of the Department of Education. Number one, we have the pre-referral intervention. Teachers in regular class, parents, classmates and other people who communicate with the child regularly report the student who is suspected to have speech and language disorders to the school principal. The special education teacher conducts the screening process by using a checklist of characteristics of children with speech and language disorders. By observing the child's communication, skills in formal and in classroom setting, and informally at home, in the playground, canteen, and similar places. The people and the parents or caregivers are interviewed to validate the result of the nomination form and checklist. The findings are com compared to the normal characteristics of speech and language development indicated in the milestone on language development to determine delays tentatively. The second one is the multifactored evaluation. By comparing the child's receptive and expressive language levels to his or her mental age, differentiation between a language problem and developmental delay can be made. Formal evaluation by a speech pathologist is arranged. Some widely used speech and language tests in the United States are the Peabody Picture Vocabulary Test, Auditory Comprehension of Language, Bohem Test of Basic Concepts, Comprehensive, Receptive, and Expressive Vocabulary Test, and the Coatsman Test on Early Academic and Language Skills. Educational Programs. The American Speech Language Hearing Association offers some suggestions for the regular teacher in an exclusive class and for the special education teacher as well. Introduce changes in the school and school home setting, especially if the child has central auditory processing problems. To help the child focus and maintain attention, give him or her a seat that is away from auditory and visual distractions, a seat close to the teacher and the blackboard, and away from the window or door may be helpful. Another, reduce external visual and auditory distractions. A large display of posters or cluttered bulletin boards can be distracting. Provide the child with a study carol. Earplugs may be useful to block distracting noises. Check with an audiologist to find out if the earplugs are appropriate and which kind to use. Another, to improve the listening environment, the following rules may be helpful. Gain the child's attention before giving direction. Speak slowly and clearly. 
but do not over exaggerate speech. Use simple, brief directions. Give directions in a logical time ordered sequence. Use words that make the sequence clear, such as first, next, finally. Use visual aids and write obstruction to supplements. Spoken information. Emphasize keywords when speaking or writing, especially when presenting new information. Preliminary instructions with emphasis on the main ideas to be presented may be effective. Use gestures that clarify information, vary loudness to decrease attention. Another, check comprehension by asking the child's question or asking for a brief summary after key ideas have been presented. Paraphrase instructions and information to shorter and simpler sentences rather than just repeating them. You can also encourage the child to ask questions for further clarification and make instructional transitions clear. You may also review previously learned material, recognize periods of fatigue, and give breaks as necessary. Avoid showing frustrations when the child misunderstands a message. Avoid asking the child to listen and write at the same time. For children with severe central auditory processing problems, ask a body to take notes or ask the teacher to provide notes. Take recording classes is another effective strategy. Thank you so much for listening and watching our lesson for today. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, please feel free to message me in my Facebook or in my email. Thank you so much and have a great day, everyone. Bye.